Thank you for joining today's webinar on Medicaid renewals. Um, my name is David Jordan with the United Methodist Health Ministry Fund. Uh, today's webinar will cover um, tips and tricks from folks on the ground working with consumers through the Medicaid renewal process. We're excited to be joined by an all-star group of presenters. Um, this is the second webinar in a series. Thank you for the folks who joined us two weeks ago. Um, for those who didn't join us, that presentation is posted on our website. Um, I want to thank the Community Care Network of Kansas for co-sponsoring our event, as well as thank Kansas Department of Health and Environment for their efforts to partner throughout this complicated process. As you know, this spring, uh, like other states, Kansas resumed the Medicaid renewal process for the first time in three years. To prevent unnecessary coverage disenrollments, we are working with partner organizations and partner foundations to spread the word about what we are doing and how we can help CanCare enrollees navigate the process. Uh, this webinar is intended to help be a resource for folks that are working on the ground with consumers to help them uh, better navigate the process for the, the partner, the folks they work with on the ground. Um, we have three great speakers today. Um, Molly Godebed, who's the program director of the Community Health Council of Wyandotte County uh, and leads the Kansas Assisters Network. Uh, Justin Gist, who's the director of community health for El Centro uh, that's based in Kansas City, Kansas and Olathe. And Rhonda Culp, who's the director of care coordination for Thrive Allen County and Thrive Kansas. Uh, Molly, Justin, and Rhonda will each present. We'll have time for question and answer um, after their presentations conclude. Um, Kate Gramlich from Community Care Network will also have a chance to react if uh, any hot topics come up that uh, deserve attention from a statewide basis. But um, again, as with last time, we wanna make full uh, advantage of the chat. Please put uh, start out by introducing yourself in the chat, name and organization uh, and location. Um, feel free to use the chat throughout the different presentations. If there's a question you have, put it there. A speaker may respond in real time, but then we'll have questions to go back to during the Q&A portion of the webinar. Um, we'll also have a chance to ask questions verbally. We'll utilize the raised hand function to do that. Um, you know, we want to make this as interactive as possible. Um, and we know that Molly, Justin, and Rhonda all have great experience, as do many of you on this call. So hopefully this can be a great effort and community discussion on how to help assisters, community health workers, outreach and enrollment professionals like yourselves um, work with can care enrollees to make the process as seamless as possible. Um, with that, um, I will turn things over to Molly to kick things off and um, just thank you all again for joining us. Molly. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, David. This is an awesome opportunity to speak to so many people on something that's so important. Um, like David said, my name is Molly Godabed, and I'm the program director of the Kansas Assistance Network. Um, we're a subsidiary of the Community Health Council of Wyandotte County. We've been doing health insurance enrollment since 2013 when the ACA rolled out the marketplace and uh, have been doing Medicaid just about that long. Um, and so this has been, as all, I'm sure all of you are aware and have experienced like since this started, since we knew this was coming about a year ago, um, our, we've been uh, preparing for this and helping folks with the renewal process since it began and uh, really just getting ready since February. Um, and we are located in Kansas City, Kansas. However, we serve the Eastern Kansas area primarily, but we will help folks virtually all over the state um, as best we can. Um, and we've been receiving a lot of calls from all over the state through referrals from MCOs and the different partners. Um, we serve primarily Wyandotte County, Johnson County, and Leavenworth County. Um, and our primary focus is on folks with low incomes um, in different vulnerable populations. And uh, we do help a lot of the refugee communities as well, because we have a good chunk of refugee folks in, uh, Can in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, and so 
really <laughs> in sorry there's a lot of distractions <laughs> yeah. um so um we work with a lot of different community partners on this um and we knew that we needed to get the information out to people as best possible because um as with everything like with the marketplace we knew that we had to hit people um in different ways so like um paper mail social media radio ads all these different things um as many ways that we could get them as possible um so we early on created a uh, campaign around medicaid unwinding through a video um we tried to make it as funny as possible so people would pay attention to it and it's only a minute long um but we got that out through social media um we worked on that together uh with I, i'm part of a coalition in uh, wyandotte county um, a lot of the work we do is through different coalitions and with partners because we want to connect with people um the way that is most natural so the organizations that already serve them um so we are part of um a community-wide uh, community health improvement plan uh, through the unified government and they have different teams and one of the areas of focus is um, health care funding and naturally the thing we decided to focus on this year was medicaid unwinding so um, we since about february we get together we were getting together every week to develop materials and just talk about some of the issues that are going on in the community and what we're seeing as we help people um, to try to troubleshoot that. And uh, we created a campaign uh, and it, it we our video that we created was at the Community Health Council, but then we used some of that information to create a uh, more kind of standardized uh, infographic and uh, outreach materials. So. Um, we created flyers and uh one of the things that we did was a bpu insert that went out with the utility bills uh so about seventy thousand residents got that in wyandotte county and the front of it was english and the back was spanish and it just basically said you know the basics of medicaid unwinding so like don't lose your medicaid and uh, that went out early enough before they actually started sending out letters to where we were prompting folks to um, update their addresses and contact information through the different uh, routes. And what we recommend for folks to do that is um, they can call their MCOs, so calling the number on the back of their card, or they can use Kiera, which is a little red chat bot that when you go to cancare.ks.gov, um, you can click on that and that will um, prompt you to update your information um, or you can actually call the can care clearinghouse or do it online yourself we want it to be as easy as possible so one of the things that we recommended was just calling your mco um, because kiera is great but for folks who don't have social security numbers that can be a little challenging um, and with online you know not everyone's tech savvy so um you know it's not always an option um so we sent those out to about 70,000 people. We had our video out, which had the same information on it um, as the BPU insert, trying to keep it consistent across the board. Um, and that has been viewed, I think, 17,000 times. I think it's actually more than that, but um, I, our, I don't have access to all of our stuff and our communications guy hasn't given us um, any updated numbers, but uh, it's actually pretty funny. So I'll uh, send that out. I, I can send it to David um, if he's interested in sending that out to the group or I could drop it in the chat after this. Um, and with our flyers, we also um, made them in about 10 different languages. We talked to Catholic Charities, um, who's the organization that serves our uh, refugee populations and asked them what would be the most popular languages that we would have this information in and they were able to tell us not only uh who were the most dominant populations but also who's the most likely to be uh have this issue going on um with the medicaid renewal so they knew that it was going to be some folks from burma and um, some of our uh folks from afghanistan were going to be the most likely to be um, impacted by this so got that information out there um 
And the, we get a lot of referrals from the MCOs and different partner organizations. Like I said, you know, we work with partners all over the metro area um, and we help in Missouri too. So we have gotten some folks in Missouri. Um, and some of the tips that I would recommend for the populations is just to make sure that they get the information in as soon as possible. Um, and it's, the number one question that we get, we've had like 500 calls in the last couple of months. Um, and uh, most people just say, I sent in my renewal and I'm waiting. It hasn't been, I, I lost my Medicaid or I'm just waiting for it to, to get the confirmation letter that everything's been accepted. Um, what do I need to do? And we tell people nothing, you know, if you've already sent it in, just hold tight there, you know, it's taking extra time to get those things processed. Um, and especially in the beginning when folks were getting disenrolled, um, we did have folks who had medical needs that we had to assist with expediting that process. And there's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, but the way that I would recommend is if you have clients who need to get that expedited, calling the clearinghouse and having them do that and raise that. Um, and then following up, we use a lot of facilitator forms. So our folks are able to uh, follow up on behalf of the clients. So um, we are able to do those virtually. Um, however, we can't do the applications virtually, but we do help as best we can. Um, and like I said, just getting those applications in as soon as possible. Um, so that way, hopefully now that there's not going to be a gap in coverage um, and then just making pe sure people check their mail because we have had a lot of folks who didn't even know it was their time to renew um, and they can actually figure that out by calling their MCOs or calling the clearinghouse. And that's another question that we have a lot too is like I got this confusing mail and I want to know what's going on and so we will actually do like three way calls with people and help them figure that information out. Um, and I think just having calls like this and communications with partners um, are the best ways to get this information out there because everyone touches uh, this population differently. And I think the more that they hear the message, the better. Um, and so, yeah, um, we are on the ground running. We get call. I know my team who's helping with this um, is constantly getting calls. Um, and so just really, um, trying to navigate the system as best we can. And we stay connected thanks to Kate and her group with the state and all the other partners. And that's been super helpful for troubleshooting. Um, and uh, oh gosh, there was something else that I was gonna say. And now uh, it's left me. Um, oh, we have community health workers at the community health council too. So we've been able to help more people like as they uh, transition, like if they're no longer eligible for Medicaid and they maybe fall in the Medicaid gap, which means they don't qualify for Medicaid or marketplace, um, then we're able to try to find them care with local safety net clinics. And then of course our team does help with marketplace applications too. Um, so it's nice to be able to provide wraparound services if we need to. Um, and we utilize uh, different referral systems like IRIS. So um, if any of you are in the KC Metro area, there's a refer integrated referral system called IRIS that we use a lot. And if anyone wants to join it, that's a great way to make connections too. So that's all I got. Excellent. Thank you, Molly. If folks have questions for Molly or comments that her comments triggered, please put them in the chat. Um, I appreciated the comments about the role that CHWs are playing and how they're helping, you know, connect folks to other types of services if coverage isn't available, because I think that's a, a models that folks need to think about. So um, I'm sure folks may have questions about that. Um, I'll turn things over to Justin Gust, who is uh, the Director of Community Health for El Centro, and he's going to talk about their outreach efforts, um, both regionally and with uh, the Latinx populations. Justin, I'll turn things over to you. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Justin Gust. I'm the Director of Community Health, as David said, and I've been with El Centro for a little over nine years now. Um, El Centro, for those of you who don't know us, we are a welcoming center for Latino immigrants and families serving both Wyandotte and Johnson counties here in Kansas. Um, we have over 46 years of experience in advocating for our community and providing 
wraparound services, in particular Medicaid and helping people fill out applications. Um, the language barrier is huge, and um, we're still working on trying to get things to be more accessible in Spanish for the population that we serve. Um, with our work around Medicaid, we have been very active, and we also have navigators in the marketplace through our grant with Thrive Allen County. Rhonda's up next to talk about that. Um, and we are also part of their uh, Medicaid project for Healthy Kids Kansas, and we'll be um, joining in that project as well. But we also have a few, a couple of national partners that we work with and just wanted to bring attention to them to share some more resources as far as outreach materials that you might be able to use. Um, we have been trying to target um, and give information to our population in Spanish. We know that there is still a lack of resources and even if, with those resources, Latinos are going to face more disparities in this challenge. Um, I just came back from a national conference and it's estimated that some six, six million Latino children across the United States are going to lose their coverage during this, during this time. Um, so we're trying our best to prevent that by providing information and educating families about what they can do to be proactive and not losing their coverage. Similar to Molly, we also created a video, um, a series of videos that talk about, um, about the unwinding and steps that people need to take in a very simplistic way. Um, the strongest message being who to contact for help, um, because that's also our, our biggest challenge. When you call the CanCare Clearinghouse, you do have to, there is an option for Spanish and there are interpreters that join those calls, but there are a lot of barriers to getting good interpreters and making sure that people are able to ask questions to the representatives at the CanCare Clearinghouse. So we have two navigators and two enrollment specialists, um, both in Johnson County and Wyandotte County to help with people, help people fill out their applications. Um, and we kind of work with people as far as how they want to proceed with their application. So some do wanna create that account online, link up their account to their case and be able to complete their renewal online. Others do prefer old school. They'd rather just fill it out on paper and mail it in. Um, and for a while, we were using the fax. Unfortunately, there were some fax issues with the CanCare Clearinghouse. We've also experienced some issues with the website, too, and as far as verifying accounts and getting everything to link up. Um, but the most important thing is that we're, we're getting it in and we're turning it into the CanCare Clearinghouse in the best timely manner possible. Um, so that's very important to, to let clients decide how they would prefer to send in their renewal, but also help them understand the importance of getting it done on a timely manner. Um, so I'm going to share in the chat just some links to some resources. Um, the first link I'm going to put in is to our website. Um, we are had created that series of videos that I talked about. They are in Spanish with English subtitles, um, but we also provided a copy of the, the scripts, the messaging that we use to create the messages um, so that others could use that. We also have a couple other videos that we just created that are kind of more national, just refer to the program as Medicaid, so that way other partners will be able to use those to create kind of their own use the message but add their contact information at the end of the video so people can contact them there in their region. Um, another group that we work with is called Community Catalyst and uh, we're part of their Organizing for Outreach grant and they have a lot of materials as well that are available online for anyone to download to use. Um, they do adapt the materials too but I believe that is just for grantees but there are other materials anybody can access um, to outreach to different populations that we know are more affected by this issue. And then the last resource I'll plug in the chat is from Unidos US. Uh, El Centro is an affiliate of this organization. Um, it's the largest Latino uh, advocacy organization in the United States. And since last year, we have been meeting with them about once a month pretty regularly to talk about things we're seeing across the United States. So it's 
both kind of shocking and comforting to know that Kansas isn't alone in this fight. There are a lot of other states that are experiencing a lot of barriers, a lot of red tape or difficulty with their Medicaid systems. But we've also seen some states that are really successful and have different avenues to better outreach to people, especially states that have their own marketplace and it's not the federally managed marketplace. So they, um, all that to say that we're, we're not alone in the fight. We definitely do value coalitions and partner building. Um, like Molly mentioned, we also participate with the Community Health Improvement Plan in Wyandotte County and have been involved in that. We've been um, involved with the meetings with Kate at the state level and then at the national level with the two organizations I mentioned. Um, and it is very important to kind of use your network and resources. Um, I'll also give a shout out to Laura Canelos from United Healthcare, one of our MCOs here in Kansas. Um, she has provided a lot of information, a lot of resources and advocacy on this issue. So I do encourage you to reach out to those liaisons. Also, um, if you know who your outstationed eligibility specialist is from CanCare Clearinghouse, they are also a good contact. We have had some cases where, as Molly mentioned, in trying to get the process and the paperwork in, people have lost coverage or they, they need to get their prescriptions filled. They have needs that need addressed right then and there. And those outstation workers are able to expedite the case and able to process them a little bit quicker than the care care clearinghouse. Um, so I do suggest if you can get that information, I believe Kate has some of that contact information um, but they are also great resources to reach out when you are having difficulty getting things done with the Can Care Clearing House. Um, I would also just say, like, we do have to meet our community where they're at. So it's not just the social media and online posting. Um, we know that that gets, gets to a few people. Um, we've run some ads on Facebook that have reached over thousands of people. Um, but we know that that's that's not it. We also provide a lot of other services here at El Centro, and so we're asking everyone that comes in our office, hey, do you, do you does your family have Medicaid, and do you need help with the renewal process? Um, we're also attending a lot of back-to-school events coming up. Um, so far, we have seven in the next couple of weeks that we're planning to attend, so that way we can talk to people one-on-one -on -one, um, and have our enrollment specialist or navigator there so they can talk about coverage options. And it's also important to note that those who do lose coverage, um, because there will be people who just simply aren't eligible anymore for the Medicaid program, um, that they should look into options with the marketplace. Um, and that's really where navigators can take a role across the state to help those people maintain their coverage by signing them up and in, into the marketplace. And I'll let um, Rhonda talk a little bit more about that um, with her navigators and team. Thrive All right, Justin, thank you. Well, Rhonda, I'll turn things over to you. Okay. Like um, David and Justin said, I am Rhonda Culp. I am the Director of Care Coordination here with Thrive Valley County, also known um, with our second nonprofit as Thrive Kansas, because um, the work I do doesn't only affect us here in Allen County. We have taken it statewide <clears throat> with different partners. Um, throughout the state. I actually have about 10 partners throughout the state of Kansas that we focus on, especially those are that are in the rural and underserved areas um, that have poverty levels um, greater than the state average of the 11.3% um, is kind of where we try to focus at. And so um, Thrive Valley County has been in a nonprofit for health and wellness for 15 years. Um, we serve counties in Southwest, Northwest, and Western Kansas, as long, along with Central Kansas, Southeast Kansas, and Northeast Kansas. And now the 105 counties here in Kansas, I have somebody in almost 59 of those counties or somebody that can get to that county if they're not immediate in the 50, in that county where they are at. And so we have built this partnership with my um, 10 partners throughout the state of Kansas um, over the last two years. Um, and I can, you know, El Centro, Justin has been a great partner with us. We also have Live Well Northeast, um, Barber County United, 
impact Ulysses out on the western side, um, Roquette County. Um, Community Health Center of Southeast Kansas is a huge partner that we partner with, not only with this grant, but with other grants. And we use them kind of like had Molly had talked because they have community health workers in their uh, community health center. So somebody is falling into that gap and is no longer eligible for Medicaid or the marketplace tax credits, we can make a referral to the Community Health Center of Kansas for them to um, get their care there um, based off their income levels, which has been huge, especially with us having a location right here in Allen County. Um, some of the stuff we have been doing for the unwinding, we've been really focused on it since about last fall, doing a lot of education like Molly had talked about, just, um, going to any um, event in almost every community we could think of, doing education about making sure they have updated their mailing address, um, whether they're calling the clearinghouse themselves or using Kira. If they're not comfortable with doing that process, we help them um, in person or by phone, whatever their preference is, depending on how far they are from our partners and whether they want to travel in or not. Um, <clears throat> we also, um, had took up to putting billboards out. Um, we have several billboards um, with our Kansas CARES logo, and that's kind of being this work falls under the statewide. Um, we didn't think it appropriate to call it Thrive Allen County, and we did create Thrive Kansas, but we still wasn't real good with that, so we created a Kansas CARES website within our Thrive Allen County website. Um, that helps people find benefit specialists or a navigator um, where they can find and get resources and help um, with this process. Um, we also have social media ads. We have also took up to running local TV campaigns and radio campaigns because um, some people don't have access to social media, um, especially in some of these rural areas where maybe internet ain't the best um, for them. And so we try to think of other forms of communication where we can just get the word out. Hey, we're here to help you with this process because some of them um, that got on during the pandemic are completely unaware that you ever had to do a renewal process. And then they're calling and getting these letters and there's like, what is this about? I thought once we signed up, that was it. We didn't have to do anything. And then we have to educate them and explain the unwinding process to them and making them understand that they don't turn in that paperwork. You know, They could be disenrolled or have a lapse in coverage and that we are here to try to keep that from happening. Um, when we schedule the appointments, come some tips and tricks that we have done when we're helping people with the renewal process is we try to make sure to tell them everything they need to bring in with those renewal applications because they are so backlogged with those renewal applications to maybe help get their applications a little bit more timelier um, from their proof of income, their bank statements and stuff like that, that helps them, especially if they're on the families and children side. If they're on the elderly and disabled side, you know, we tell them, you know, you don't only need proof of income, bank statements, you also need proof of other health insurance and any life insurance policies, annuities, or burial plans you have, and bring that all in when they come and see us so we can fax it all in at the same time to help maybe streamline that process a little bit better so they're not missing important mail because um, they didn't have all the necessary documents um, for them to complete their renewal. Um, and I know that was probably pretty fast, but that's about all I have. Great, thank you, Rhonda. Um, sorry, I'm, there's my video. Um, does anyone, I've seen a lot of chatter in the chat about um, resources that are available, United Healthcare offering um, tools in uh, different languages, access to um, the outreach and enrollment information through Thrive, um, videos that Molly talked about and the website that Justin had talked about. Um, any questions that folks have um, specifically for 
um, any of the presenters today. Well, I may ask some questions. Kate, do you have any reaction or want to share any news from the perspective of um, information that the state's sharing? I know there is a pause on um, disenrollments, which I think is a positive, but um, there may be some more that you want to share with the group. Yeah, um, so we have been learning from um, KDHE that um, there have been such huge mail delays and some other kind of procedural problems, which a lot of you have probably heard about. Um, and so they had um, CanCare pause their renewals. So um, until just very recently, nobody had um, lost coverage from the April and May letters that went out. Um, but now those folks have lost coverage um, and would still have a little bit of time to send in their renewals. Um, I can share some data that is from different counties. Uh, and if you wanna look up for your county, you can see um, the different age groups of folks who did lose coverage, who were up for renewal in April or May. Um, and it's been pretty shocking um, because a lot of it is kids, so, much, so many of it is um, children in these different counties that um, maybe parents don't know about the renewals, you know, um, and they haven't uh, known who to contact or, or the parents got the renewals and didn't really realize the importance of it. Um, and for kind of all the partners on this call and then each and every one of you who works with different populations or knows different families, um, they can uh, help kind of spread this information that we're sharing and a bunch of these resources that we've been um, talking about. Oh, and question, um, will coverage be backdated? So it would be backdated to when they lost their coverage. So um, they would have, they have 90 days from that initial coverage loss date. I can get some clarification. Um, and then their coverage will be backdated if they do qualify after getting their renewal paperwork in. Um, unfortunately, though, any kind of medical expenses that they would have had at that time would be out of pocket until they get it backdated and then work with their, you know, uh, pediatrician and um, insurance provider on getting those covered Medicaid. So there is, um, there's definitely still hope if you know families who call and say that they, um, you know, lost their coverage. Um, it's not all over. Uh, they can get their renewal work, um, call the clearinghouse if they've lost it or never received it, and uh, and send that in, get that back coverage. Um, and we kind of let folks know that um, doing the renewal paperwork is going to save some time. Um, the paperwork for the renewals is something like half the number of pages as the application and parts of it is already kind of pre-filled out for that family. So um, before you do a new application, definitely get their renewal form from the clearinghouse and then send that in as soon as possible. Uh, we've got another question. Oh yeah, this is great. Um, so given that kids are representative of many and most of those losing coverage, how do we uh, disseminate this information effectively through our schools and public health departments and those doing back to school physicals. I would love to open that up to folks on this call. I know there's a lot of communities that are represented and a lot of different areas of Kansas. Um, I would love to hear kind of ideas that you have about how we can get the information out there or how you might want to use what you've learned and the resources that you've learned about um, on these calls to help the kiddos in your area. So Anybody have any ideas? I can take a start um, for that question. I think um, definitely outreach at back to school events. There are quite a few. There are also a lot of clinics like FQHCs um, here in the area, Health Partnership Clinic, Vibrant Health, Swope Health, who are doing back to school health fairs as well. Um, so we are trying to meet people at those events to talk about their Medicaid needs. 
Um, I think we also are always trying to work to get communication to school nurses um, as they kind of oversee the vaccine process and making sure children are up to date on their vaccines. Um, and then asking the question about health insurance and coverage. Um, there will still, we still have a group of children who just simply aren't eligible for Medicaid because of their, um, because of their eligibility requirements. Um, but for those students who do have it, um, that is what we're seeing is that the majority are children who are being disenrolled from Medicaid. And it's not because of the eligibility requirements, it's simply because the process wasn't completed. Um, it tends to be more kind of blaming the parent or blaming the family. You know, they should have gotten their address updated, they should have received their thing, they should have turned it in on time. But we know that there's a lot more barriers um, from the system and not just from the person. Um, just the last night I was seeing here in Johnson County that mail service has been suspended in some cities because they don't have enough workers. And so, you know, with elections coming up too, that is a, a scary thing because we're not just talking about ballots being lost in the mail or not delivered, but also uh, these Medicaid renewals. So I think it is going to take all of us and really trying to get into the schools the best that we can. Um, we participate with a couple of our school districts and their McKinney-Vento programs, um, which help serve students who are experiencing homelessness or doubled up with other families. And that's also a, a way or a venue that we use to re outreach to those families to make sure that they're up to date on their coverage needs. And we're also going to be working on um, creating some smaller postcards to take the local grocery stores, but also um, an idea from the conference I brought back home is outreaching to pharmacies um, and providing those postcards there at local pharmacies who can hopefully pass them out or if they see people have Medicaid coverage or if they have someone who was um, is now inactive and doesn't have coverage to be able to give them our contact information um, so that we can help that assist that family in getting their coverage back. Um, so trying to think strategically where people go, sometimes people see their pharmacist more than they see their doctor um, for their monthly prescriptions. And that's usually where people find out you no longer have coverage, um, but then they don't know where to go or necessarily who to turn to at that point. So we're going to be looking into trying to, to partner up with pharmacies as, along with schools and other events, because we know this whole process, there are some over 90 million people in the United States who are going to have to go through this renewal process. And so it's important to make sure that we are getting at all levels across the community. Thank you, Justin. Any, Molly or Rhonda, anything to add in terms of um, ways you've worked with schools or um, associations or groups that serve school-aged children to help raise awareness as we're approaching back to school? Yeah, so we have actually met with two different Early Head Start programs and given them our outreach materials. And um, the Project Eagle Early Head Start program is helping folks with renewals. So that's a huge resource in our community. And I apologize, I have my own child. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we have had um, it just events that we know children are gonna be at. We attended a spring event through one of the local Latino radio stations and um, saw about a thousand people. Great. Rhonda, did you have any other, any other pieces to add? Well, we're also doing the back to school events, um, <clears throat> especially here in Allen County, um, where we're gonna have a table at moment um, to do that education piece and to help those, um, you know, update their information, check and see when their disenrollment is, if it hasn't already happened, and then to see um, where they qualify at, where they fall within Medicaid or marketplace and what would be the best options for them. We also work um, with the Community Health Center of Southeast Kansas um, on a vaccine grant as well. So we are kind of taking that partnership in addition to go to those vaccine events um, that they're doing. Um, for children and school age children and being there to be able to also educate um, on the importance of coverage and who they can reach out to if they have lost coverage. And those are the main two events that we got going on right now, especially with the back to school happening here in August. 
Excellent. Thank you, Rhonda. Um, Laura Canellis from uh, United had asked if she could share some resources. So Laura, uh, I'll turn things over to you for a moment. Thank you, David. And it's awesome to hear everything that is going on. Uh, we've been working with uh, most of, of folks here since a couple of years ago already. Um, but now is when really everything gets kind of tested and everybody's been just amazing helping our members. Um, if there's a provider in the call, a medical provider that has members assigned to them as primary care physician, or if you know of them, so think about pediatricians, um, uh, federally qualified health centers, um, any, any medical practice that has members assigned to them as a primary care physician, we're happy to share data with them, specific member data with their renewal dates. Um, we've been we've been doing this with a lot of providers, but there's a few that have not yet engaged or responded or that might not know. So if you know of anyone that is wanting that data to help us do more outreach or to inform their planning, we're happy to help with that. Um, several organizations are doing fantastic work of sending text messages to those members through their systems or making phone calls. And this one is awesome. They make phone calls and they make appointments saying, hey, your, your renewal date is approaching. You want to make an appointment with our navigators? and doing it right there and then and helping people. Um, so that's very helpful because sometimes if you get a message, a text from the state, you might not pay attention or might not understand it. You get it from your insurance company, like, oh, it's more information, the usual. But if it is your doctor calling you, you do pay attention. So we're just trying to diversify uh, the, the approach. Um, again, if you need many materials to help spread the word, send me an email. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Um... Folks, do folks have other questions? I see one of our great board members uh, on the, the webinar, um, Pastor G. Uh, G. And it just triggered me to think about asking the question, is there any outreach that, uh, or materials that could be used or tailored for faith-based audiences and maybe working with pastors? Or any advice on how to talk about this from, uh, for pastors or for folks within congregations? Um, probably you can reach out to the school, working with the school and the people in the community senior centers, then uh, we can give a good information, how can reach out and use the, you know, portable care. Um, some some like uh, in Paola, we say most of the people's a white congregation, probably they can understand English better, but Sometimes they people who live with a grandparent they lose to the chance to um, the vaccinated their grandchildren. So that would be nice to give them information, connect with a principal, the in a provider. It's very important to vaccinate information to keep the right track. That is another we can approach for the reach out to the community as a pastor in the local church city. Thank you. Um... Any any thoughts on this beyond the the you know the on the ground piece on how G Suk had mentioned they could work with folks in the community from a faith based lens? So I know one thing we've done in the past we actually haven't done it with unwinding but we absolutely should is with marketplace. Um, we do have several churches that we partner with and would go and present on Sundays or like after the service. Um, and we do have a lot of big churches in the area um, and attending some of their events too. We used to attend um, different um, outreach events that the churches would hold. And actually recently in Wyandotte, one of our local churches had a 5K and we were there passing out information about unwinding as was El Centro and uh, United Healthcare and anybody who's involved in Wyandotte County. So that's another great opportunity. Great, thank you, Molly. Any other questions, thoughts, or resources that folks wanna share? David, I had a comment. Uh, this is Tammy in Riley County. Um, we have a handful of staff here that can do the PE applications, presumptive eligibility. So. Um, I personally haven't seen anyone that's lost, you know, their coverage and we've gone that route, but that might be an option for some other people, you know, if they can get training um, that way to help people at least get that quick right away answer and get a short term coverage till can care can take over so. Great, I, I appreciate you sharing that and I saw Devon in the chat had a similar uh, comment in terms of some of the resources um, around presumptive eligibility. Um, 
uh, as a health department that uh, folks can look up came out to see if a client has coverage, but una unable to see a renewal date to share. And I think this is probably one of the things that's more challenging because how do we message this in a way that folks know to look to update their contact information, but they don't know when they're going to be up for a renewal. And I think that's where some of the partnership with the health plans can help a little bit. Um, but I do think that that is a challenge. I don't know if folks have um, any comments. Yeah, it's, you you answered it right. Is that is that an IT limitation? Um, we have talked with the state about that, but it will be a huge endeavor, um, both from their end with and their uh, vendor, Gamewell, that manages the data for KMAP. Um, so yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon if it happens. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can always call the MCO. You can always call Canker to us for day, but that can be a long waiting line, or you can call the MCO to request that renewal date. Um, if they, if they have assigned for, um, members to them, we can also share that data. If they don't have members assigned to them, we can look into it. I don't make from any promises, but we can look into it too for data sharing. Um, and I will check if there's anything else going on on our end and let you know if there has been any update regarding how more like easily look up the renewal data on the system. Um, along those lines, I also want to mention, and this is fairly new, that the state is reevaluating the distribution of the members, which is great news because the vast majority of them were front loaded the first four months. The reason is because the PhD kept being extended and there was no certainty. So the members kept being rolled four months at a time. Um, that's how long you know, it was three to four months that the PhD kept being extended. But they have recognized that that has caused a lot of um, issues. So they are re they reevaluated the August renewal dates and some folks that were doing August were moved uh, for future months, which is great. Uh, and they might continue doing that same strategy of reevaluating renewal dates and pushing them forward. So that is just to say it's good news, but it, it also might mean that if a member had called and at some point was told by the MCO or by the canker, uh, your renewal date is in December, for example, that might change, but it might change for the for the good. It might change like they were moved to January or 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 February. So even if they do call now, uh, the canker or the MCO, that they might be subject to change, but in a good way. Great, thank you for that. Um, and I think it's still why it's so important to remind folks to update their contact information and also to let them know that this process is going to happen and to be on the lookout. Um, and I think it's, you know, just underscoring the piece from the more technical standpoint that Kate had mentioned earlier is that if folks have, you know, this disenrollment process has started, it's better to use the renewal forms than it is to start a new uh, enrollment process because it will work, you know, faster. Um, I think the other piece is, just make sure that we're flagging, you're flagging these issues for uh, Kate and Rhonda and others like Molly and Justin so that they're communicated back to the state so that your on the ground experience can be used to hopefully improve the administrative policies that guide how this process works. Um, any other questions that folks have or items that they'd like to see or just gap, you know, resources that could be helpful for specific partners. Any needs? David, this is Heather from Kansas Action for Children. And the one group I haven't heard mentioned that I be, would, would be remiss in not suggesting is libraries in your towns across the state is, you know, a place where kids and parents are gathering um, for story time and things like that. So that could be an additional place for people to be connecting with in their communities to get the word out about this. They have message boards in a lot of cases where people can post information, things like that. I think that's a great um, point. Thank you, Heather. Um, and I think if there's specific tools that would be helpful for these populations, I think speak up and we can try to make sure that things can be tailored to help libraries or, you know, help support our reach to kids. So, um, and I think the other piece of this is a lot of this is really 
um, you you all are doing this important work uh, one by one and you know one event at a time. So if there's other thoughts on raising general awareness, we know that not enough of Kansans are aware that this is going on and how can we help provide some air cover, I think is is something that we're thinking about and I know others are too. So um, I think folks are really interested in hearing from the folks with the experience on the ground and we'd encourage you to make sure you um, share that information so there's a strong feedback loop. And Kate's the right person to to reach out to on that. And I know folks have her contact information. Um, I was going to say, if uh, if there's any events in your area across Kansas and you want some um, KDHE or can care meals, uh, we're working on getting a bunch translated into several different languages. So um, I'm putting my email in the chat again, but email me and we can get um, some things sent your way. Excellent. Um, thank you, Kate. And, you know, one other piece that we're we're going to try to see if we can create is just a forum for folks with the on the ground work that like you to provide some direct feedback to um, folks within the agency. So if you'd like to be part of a forum like that, reach out to Kate or feel free to email me or our team. You know, I want to thank Jennifer Ellis and Jeff Gamber for the hard work on our end, putting this together and for all of our partners and um, our presenters. But reach out to us if you have any needs. We coordinate closely with Kate and other partner foundations and groups. So um, we want to hear from folks and we appreciate you taking the time to join this webinar and thank you for your work. Any any last nuggets of advice from the presenters? All right. I, would, I was just going to say, I would say it, it does take us all. And what I'm really glad to see is that we do have this opportunity. We have this coalition. Um, Kate has been doing a great job of reaching out to all of us and different partners to bring us together. Um, and so, yeah, just keep the ideas going, keep the advocacy going, because we can hopefully eventually change things to way to make it easier for families in the future in this renewal process and not just get through this um, this hurdle right now. Absolutely. Perfect way to end. Um, thank you, everyone. And we will look forward to connecting and be in touch if we can be helpful. Have a great day. Thanks.